All right, so today I wanted to talk about this Raze Pro 3. So they've, uh, first time I used the Raze was the Raze Pro 2 and had a pretty good experience with it overall. Not much to complain about. This one, I assumed would be much improved uh, being the next generation. I figured they'd take the feedback, make good improvements. And for the most part, it's a great machine. Like it's build construction is fantastic. Like the, the Z rails and the Z screw on both sides is fantastic and it seems very sturdy and well built that way but the software seems to let it down and some of the extruder assembly seems to have some issues Let's pop this off here so some of the issues we've had have been with the, the control board on the extruder head and the extruders themselves so I think <clears throat> we went through four extruders within the first month just because they kept clogging and having issues like that and each one is 140 bucks which they don't kind of tell you that's the the whole extruder assembly and they basically tell you if at all you change the nozzle then you should get a whole new extruder assembly um, and one of those yeah, extruder assembly is just this so these come 140 bucks in their quick change, which is really nice. Seems like a great feature, especially for swapping between different types of nozzles, hardened steel, bronze, brass, whatever you may want to use. But definitely issues with the clogging. So there's definitely a heat creep issue that's in there and they refuse to acknowledge it. So you either have to run very, very low extrusion um, retraction values or just kind of deal with it. And then once it's clogged, Kind of in the, the mid area here there's no way to access it um, from anywhere and so you either hope that you can force it out or use enough heat to reach it and melt it out but other than that it's kind of done for um, and then i had another major issue where i was getting thermal runaway and i just couldn't believe why like i wasn't running anything crazy i had the cover on it but i was running just abs nothing too crazy running all the standard temperature recommendations, everything like that. Went through troubleshooting with support, which was not the worst experience, but also not great. Everything online. And they expect me to do some firmware updates, and then they asked me for the version of my boards, which the one that they were talking about is this one on the rear that I have currently exposed. When I told them the version of the board, they explained to me, like, oh, we're sorry, your board's too old to be updated. I was like, how is that the case? This machine's only six months old um, and they would not send me a new board with updated firmware and that would be future proof because I was now out of the warranty period and most people would think six months why would that be out of the warranty period something I failed to realize when I purchased this is Raze only offers a 90-day manufacturer warranty um, don't know how I overlooked that but I believe if I would have realized that, I may have gone with my other choice, which was an Ultimaker S5. Now, the Ultimaker S5 is definitely more expensive, but, and I'm sure they have their own set of issues for various things, but that was kind of a red flag once I realized that it was out of warranty after 90 days. That for something that's supposed to be a commercial grade, professional grade 3D printer, you would expect more than that. You expect someone to stand behind their product more than that. So, that kind of raised a red flag. Um, I had durability issues with the original bed. We ended up purchasing a second-hand bed, or no, sorry, a third-party bed from another source, and it's been great since then. But all in all, when it does print, it prints beautifully. As you can see, it's got a really nice print here. This is a 0.2 layer height with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The layers are very clean, it does a good job. The seam control is pretty good, not the best. Uh, Idea Maker is a little bit limited in its feature set. And you could use a different slicer, but being that I was trying to stick with their software for their machine and go that route to make sure there were no issues, I stick with Idea Maker for this printer specifically. Uh, but yeah, so if anyone has any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, it seems to be working well right now, but it's kind of one of those machines now to where when I need it, it always seems to go down and have issues. Um, oh, I did have the the support nozzle or the second nozzle lift motor go out within the first two months and they did replace that for me because they 
I looked on their website to buy a replacement part and you cannot buy that part as a replacement part. And it's just a small little servo motor here. So it's just this little guy. And I was able to find the part number on the front and find another backup for myself. But I explained to them that they should replace it due to the fact that you cannot buy it anywhere else. And they agreed and they did send it. But they were reluctant at first. They didn't want to send me anything. So, but yeah, just not the greatest experience. Um, but when the printer prints, it prints really well. But when it goes down, it goes down hard. So let me know if you have anything specifically to ask about it or if you've had your own troubles. Uh, just shoot me a message or leave a comment. And then next one we're going to talk about is this. Figured it was really cheap at the time, but it's any cubic Cobra Neo. And so I'll uh, walk you through this one. All right. Thanks for tuning in today. And talk to you later.